Hello, today we're going to talk about this rig that you see right here for a deep sky astrophotography specifically. There are a couple of items here that really make this rig, uh, in my opinion, kind of the ultimate um, travel deep sky uh, companion that you can really take with you on a plane. You can take it on a hike and it fits in a backpack. It doesn't need any counterweights, anything like this. Uh, and it can really, really deliver. As you will see later in this video, I will show you the image of the Heart and Soul Nebula that I have recently captured using this setup. Of course, the main thing here is Benro Polaris, as you can see right here as the mount. Canon EOS R Sigma 135, but there are also a couple of other uh, small accessories that really make this entire rig um, work really, really well, which I'm going to uh, get into a little bit more detail uh, in this video. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so um, a few months ago, back in June, I was uh, traveling with Benro Polaris around Mallorca. I was doing mainly landscape astrophotography, Milky Way, panoramas, all that kind of stuff. And I made a video, if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out, it will be linked down below in the description. I made a video about how awesome Polaris is, how awesome Polaris could be in the future with further software updates. And there were some really key and interesting software updates uh, throughout the months. Uh, and now I really wanted to focus on Polaris for deep sky astrophotography, because as I mentioned previously, Polaris is awesome for landscape astrophotography. It's the only mount that really can do automated tracked panoramas of the night sky, which is just amazing. And uh, it can also do um, deep sky because uh, it is capable the motors here are very capable of uh, lifting heavy payloads uh, so i saw some people online even trying to put like telescopes on benro polaris i didn't try that uh, my telescope is quite big and with a lot of those accessories that i have on my telescope i really don't think it would be a good idea i have a separate computerized go-to mount, a big mount with counterweights and you know, hefty mount for the telescope. But when I'm traveling, especially by plane or if I'm like just backpacking somewhere, I don't want to bring the telescope and the mount. It was just too heavy and too cumbersome to bring with me. However, this setup is super lightweight and I think it can really um, deliver as you will see. So uh, again, what do we have here? So obviously we have Benro Polaris right here. This is the Astro uh, version with this Astro attachment. This is the third axis that counteracts the field rotation as you are tracking the sky. Here we have the Canon EOS R, the Google Trusty Canon EOS R Astro Modified that I'm using for years at this point. Here is a Sigma 135 f1.8 uh, lens, which is, uh, well, it's a very popular uh, focal length for sort of very wide field deep sky astrophotography. Most people would use the cheaper and kind of equally good for Astro, Samyang slash Rokinon 135 f2. This Sigma has autofocus, so it doubles for like portrait lens or whatever, not related to astrophotography altogether. And at f1.8 or f2, it's super sharp, collects a ton of light. And the 135 is a cool focal length for like wide field, wider fields of like Orion or Cygnus, uh, you know, areas of the sky with a lot of nebulosity going on. Uh, and also here we have, um, actually, you know what, I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about this silver thing that you see right here uh, later on. So first, uh, what are the main concerns sort of with Polaris when it comes to deep sky ash photography? The first thing, which is something that um, I think can be improved via software, is the alignment to stars. So um, currently, uh, when you the process of alignment, the process of sort of setting up Benro Polaris to track the night sky is not un, it's unlike you know typical equatorial mount. You don't polar align it. You don't need a view of Polaris. You don't even need to know about any of that. Um, but it uh, consists of basically two steps. One of them is leveling. It's very important to level your base. And for that, I also am using a super cool accessory. It is this thing right here on the base. It's called um, leveling plate minus from newer. And uh, there's also one from a funny named company, Kulheida, Kulheida, something like this. I will link down below and um, both of them. You can get them from Amazon really cheap and they really make it so much easier to level Polaris because without it, you would have to extend and contract the tripod legs, which is something that I have been doing in Mallorca and it's a pain in the ass, let me tell you. And with this leveling base, you just undo this screw 
and basically as you can see it wobbles a little bit it gives you this play here and you can level it using uh, some even your phone gyro or something right here and you can also rotate it which is also sometimes handy um, really really cool and very very hefty it's not like using just a ball head here if you were using a ball head everything would be wobbly and not really useful for deep sky astrophotography with this it is super stable not wobbly at all so definitely highly recommended uh, and once you level it you need to pick a star that you see you can recognize uh, so some basic knowledge is required like for instance vega is pretty bright or capella or aldebaran or whatever uh, or alnitag and orion uh, and you you uh, move the amount using an app for that star and then you check on the back of the camera if it is really centered in the field of view usually it will not be and you can use joysticks or these big knobs to align it in dead in the center and then say okay this is my alignment and that's how polaris knows where the other stuff in the night sky is and then it has a feature called go to which basically means that in the app you can tell where do you want to point it and you don't need to think about uh, framing your targets that much because uh, with uh, especially with deep sky and especially with not so obvious targets like the obvious target would be um, horsecat nebula or orion nebula very very close to the orion's belt really easy to frame up sort of eyeballing but if you're looking for something more dim it might be challenging to actually find it in the sky and center it in your camera i was before using um star watch Skywatcher Star Adventure and it is quite a challenge to find an object especially with even longer focal lens than 135. I even made some videos of how to kind of hack it and to kind of make like a manual go-to. Really cool videos. If you have Star Adventure definitely check them out again links down below but here you can just say in the app okay I just want to point to um, some star or some nebula and it will automatically point there having this sky model after the alignment. The sky uh, the deep sky objects catalog is quite limiting still there's no ngc there's no ic there's no sharpless uh, there are some messier objects uh, but if you're looking for something that's not in the messier catalog you might have troubles however they did add uh, during those couple of months they did add a possibility to, to type in by hand the celestial coordinates of any point in the sky that you want so you can just check in a different planetarium like stellarium what are the coordinates the right ascension and the declination and type those numbers into Polaris and it will slew there and it works pretty pretty well uh, especially if you star line on a star that is close to the object that you want to photograph the uh, the go-to is quite accurate however they could improve here they could uh, add two or three star alignment this is what other mounts like Skywatcher or Ioptron implement and it would make the sky model really really like way more accurate and I've been told on some forums I have been asking around and supposedly um, Benro is working on that so if they did that it would be definitely an improvement and also something that they could do that there is not uh, here still is plate solving which basically means that once you slew to your target you can take a photo and you can analyze uh, and figure out where you are actually pointed and then you can use that information uh, along with the information where you want to be pointed uh, to make the necessary corrections this is what bigger mounts computerized mounts connected to like asi air or uh, just computer um, laptop whatever are doing this is really really helpful especially with long focal lens here you don't have that yet i think with software they could add it uh, I don't really see a reason why wouldn't they and it will be pretty awesome for now you don't have it but still if you star line on a star that is close by you can uh, you can expect the go to to be pretty close to the target that you want um, and then there's also of course the um, tracking accuracy so again um, with 135 it's it's a pretty long focal length uh, especially compared to like Milky Way focal lens like 24 or 35 millimeters but it's not too long to really make problems and especially with 135 where we have a big aperture like f2 f1.8 you can collect a lot of light in relatively short periods of time so I have been using this with one minute sub exposures and the star shapes are uh, they're not ideal as you will see in a minute but I think they're um, good enough I think uh, and then there is one last thing which is actually framing up your target when it comes to orientation because it's not straightforward how to change the orientation 
uh, using Polaris. If you are cropping in, uh, you can change your orientation and post, but if you don't want to crop in, pretty much there is no way to do that. Um, unless you are using this silver thing, which is called Atoll. This is a relatively new product. I don't think it hit the market just yet. Uh, there was a Kickstarter campaign, which I backed up and they sent me this sort of kind of pre-production unit uh, so I can mention it uh, in this video actually. So uh, here it is, <laughs> I'm mentioning it and I absolutely love this. This is what allows you to basically undo the screw and you can check this out. You can rotate your camera any way you want. And there's this haptic, hear that? Boom, boom, click maybe, click, click. And the click is telling you, okay, you are vertical now. And if I go back, click, I'm now horizontal. And that way I can switch between horizontal and vertical without taking the camera uh, off the tripod or a mount. I don't have anything obstructed when it comes to the ports or the SD card door like I would with a traditional L bracket. And I actually despised hell, uh, L, bra L brackets. Yeah, I can call them hell brackets. I despise L brackets because they are clunky. They don't shift the center of mass of the camera towards the lens. So it's still sort of hanging here and it can make the ball head sort of sink in over time. Um, and there's no easy way to dial in anything in between. There's no, no way at all to dial in a rotation in between 90 and zero. And here with, with Atoll, you can definitely do that. So once you salute your target, the orientation will actually depend on the time of day because while Polaris is slowing, it will always use the sort of base uh, orientation of the third uh, motor here on the Astro attachment. And it will just use these two to frame up your target. So depending on the time of day, it will be framed up differently. And then while it, once you start tracking, it will use the third axis to counteract for the field rotation uh, because of the rotation of the earth. So if you want to dial in, once you slew and you want to dial in your rotation, you can use Atoll to do that. And it is really amazing. It works with any lens. You attach uh, basically your camera to this point and then you have this ring which can rotate on itself and then the other part is attaching to a tripod or a mount and that way you can use it with any lens, with a small lens, a vintage lens, or no lens whatsoever like a pancake lens. It doesn't require anything on side of the lens to work. It just needs this tripod um, sort of attachment on the bottom of the camera which every camera has. So Atoll with Polaris is amazing. I think and the uh, one last thing that I used for this setup, which I'm going to also mention once once we get into the computer to uh, show you the files, is a filter because I was doing I was doing this session in Krakow where I live, which is Portal 7 class sky, not very dark, um, not dark at all. Uh, so I wanted to use some dual narrowband filter with my color camera here to capture the nebulosity around the Heart and Soul Nebula. So I went for the... Um, STC dual narrowband filter, which is here. Uh, it looks silverish because it reflects a lot of light. It's a clip-in filter that goes onto the sensor um, and it passes only a narrowband around hydrogen alpha and oxygen three to um, boost the contrast in the nebula that you are capturing. Let me just put this back on. Um, and this filter, as you will see, it's not the best that there is when it comes to dual narrowband filters, but it is the only filter that uh, they, that is being manufactured as a clip-in filter on the sensor between the camera and the lens for Canon EOS R cameras. So I'll also link it down below in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, so let's actually look at some images. Um, but actually, before we do that, one last thing is that Polaris, um, during those couple of months since I was using it for landscape in June, also added an option to dither your images right in Polaris, which is pretty awesome because usually dithering is only something that is available for uh, bigger mounts, computerized mounts, especially guided mounts. You need a guide scope and a guide camera and guiding software to be able to dither. And dithering is um, basically moving your frame uh, around the target that you're photographing randomly between sub exposures in just a way uh, that once you then realign them back together to stack them in post-production, it will um, it will average out any sort of fixed pattern noise that might be on the camera. And especially with like mirrorless and DSLR 
uh, cameras, Canon cameras, uh, they have a lot of banding issues if you don't dither and then try to pull out faint details in your astrophotography images. So using dithering here really, really helps. And as you will see, it really works. Uh, it really works with Polaris without a guider. So kudos for Benro for implementing that. Really, really, really appreciated by the Astro community. Okay, so let's take a look at some images. And I can see there are a couple of subs here. Uh, once I'm just scrolling past them, you can see that the framing actually changes uh, indeed between every sub exposure. And that is due to dithering in order to be able to get rid of this fixed pattern noise that I just mentioned. And then, um, I, I took uh, I took about uh, I have think 121 to be exact one minute subframes so that will give me two hours of integration at f2 with the sigma 135 and I stacked them and I integrated them using Astro Pixel processor I also took a full suite of calibration frames which is flats dark flats and darks I knew I definitely needed good flats for this session because as you can see in those subs there is this um, kind of coloration vignette slash uh, you, you can see this pattern uh, with with colors like pink and, and green that really is present on every single image regardless of the framing so that gave me uh, a clue that it is probably due to the sensor uh, due to the uh, filter itself and in order to remove it from my images I would have to take flats with the sense with this filter as well and as you can see on those flats the same sort of pattern emerges and after uh, calibration and after integration um, this pattern was gone uh, so it, uh, it 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 is an imperfection I would say of the filter probably but it uh, goes away uh, if you have flats uh, then during during the calibration frames of uh, phase of post-production um, and as you can see when it comes to star shapes they're not perfectly round uh, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm used to having absolutely perfect stars with my iOptron Sen 25P very accurate mount and guiding and all of that when I'm shooting with my telescope so those images have really really pinpoint uh, very sharp stars uh, here you, if you pixel peep you may see some elongation um, but I think in the grand scheme of things, if you don't pixel people like this and you just have a um, you know, full image, especially on like social media, maybe if you print it, people will be able to notice, but especially for like social media and stuff um, or small size prints, it should be fine. And maybe Benro could even uh, improve on that because I think if they implement, and I think they will, once they implement the two or three star alignment, they will have a more accurate model of the sky in Polaris and they will be able to track more accurately because tracking with Polaris is all about knowing where the Polaris is actually pointed. This is how it works, unlike an equatorial mount. So if they improve on that with software, which would they which will they do which they will do for free, once you get Polaris today, you will get those software updates and firmware updates for free. It will maybe um improved further. But I think even today it's already pretty good and I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, so I integrated all of these images, I edited them in Pixinside and in Photoshop and this is the final result of the Hardened Soul Nebula. Uh, I very much like the result. I was going for this kind of Hubble palette here from my uh, from my one-shot color camera from the from the Canon US R. Uh, I really like the result. I think the filter itself um, was letting through more light pollution than I would want, more than I'm used to, again, with my telescope. But with my telescope, I'm using three nanometer and narrow band filters and the STC uh, filters, the, the bands around hydrogen and oxygen are way wider than three nanometers. So that's why they let in more light pollution. But this is the only filter currently on the market that's being manufactured sorry, as a clip-in filter for Canon USR and also for a number of different cameras. The only other option uh, I would recommend other than the STC as of today would be the Optolong L Enhance as a clip-in, but it is only available for Canon APS-C DSLRs. So if you have one of these, uh, be my guest. But I've been told by Optolong that uh, they are working on a clip-in version of either an L Extreme or maybe even an L Ultimate for Canon EOS R which would be amazing, even the Ellen Hans would be amazing, uh, and I will be definitely testing that and comparing that to the STC. Optolong promised that they will send me a sample once it's ready, maybe next year, maybe, I don't know. But for now, the STC I think is good enough. I will link it down below. If you do, if you wanna do like narrow band imaging from the light polluted um, sky, 
the STC with the EOS R or some other camera it's compatible with uh, would be a good choice, I think, as of today. Uh, once the Optolongs are on the market, I think they will be uh, better than the STC. So, um, you know, subscribe to the channel and you will definitely notice because I will definitely make a video sort of comparing these once uh, the Optolong is out on the market. For now, I would definitely recommend this setup, especially if you want to, like, I don't know, if you want to go to La Palma. Uh, and shoot uh, deep sky or maybe even wide field uh, from those observatories, from those awesome places which I am yet still to go. Uh, I would definitely recommend you can put it on the into your backpack easily, you know, excluding the tripod. You can set it up very, very quickly. You don't need to waste a lot of time polar aligning and, you know, fiddling with stuff. It is capable of uh, tracking quite accurately, even with hefty lenses like this 135. And really Polaris is kind of a jack of all trades here because you can take on an airplane, let's say, you can take only Polaris and you can do so much with it. You can do Milky Way photography, you can do panoramas, you can do deep sky, you can do time lapses, you can do, you can do so much with this mount. I really think this is a re revolutionary mount, um, being so small and being able to do so much in a light and small package. Um, if you want to grab Polaris, you can head over to the site that I will link again down below. It's a Polish site, but you can, with my uh, sort of coupon code, you can get 20% off for a limited amount of time. And if you are in the EU, they will easily be able to send it out to you outside of Poland. If you're outside of EU, you can still contact them and maybe they will be able to figure it out. But it's definitely worth it. It's Polaris is, is quite expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth the money being able to do so many things, including Deep Sky. And with my code, you can get a 20% off. So uh, don't miss out on that opportunity. And um, yeah, that's basically it for me. Hopefully, see you in one, one, see you in one of my next videos. Um, have a great uh, next Astro Imaging session. Clear skies and bye-bye.